This is a video for how to go about starting your good luck charm project in Fusion 360. You'll notice that I have Fusion 360 open. I have my workspace out here. On the left-hand side, you can see I got some other projects kind of open um, just to go over with you again about how to start a new project. Um, you know, you might see this little waffle thing up in the top left-hand corner. If you click on that waffle, it'll, you know, get rid of your project area. If I click on it again over here, it'll come back. Now, you need to click on your house up here in the top left, and we're going to click on new project. And I want to call this Good Luck Charm. That's going to be the start of the new project. So as we scroll through, you'll see Good Luck Charm. Let's see if it's up here at the top. There we go, Good Luck Charm right here. Now I want to pin this at the top, though, so you don't have to scroll all the way through. So I'm going to click on Pin, and notice how it goes way up to the top. And I got my Good Luck Charm project right here. I'm going to double click on Good Luck Charm, and you're going to see it's like basically saying to you, you know, you haven't designed anything for this. Um, here's how we started our project. It's just kind of like grabbing an empty box and saying, I'm going to start this project here. I'm going to put my parts in there. Next thing we will do is we are going to go to our design area and we're going to click on create sketch. And I want you to please use the origin folder when you choose the right plane. And I want you to make sure you choose the XZ plane. Please make sure you choose the XZ plane. And I'm going to click on XZ and it's going to rotate for us. Now in you know, previous lesson last week, I talked to you about the parameters that you have in our define the problem slide. The dimensional constraints were a width of 40 millimeters, the depth of 40 millimeters, and a height of 25 millimeters. So I'm going to go back to Fusion, and we need to go up to document settings, and we want to make sure that we're in millimeters. If by chance you're in inches, you can click on this little pencil, and this will pop up, and you can switch from any one of these, but we're going to stay in millimeters. And I'm going to leave it like that. Now, in order to give us some constraints to work with, you know, we have a 40 by 40 box that we can't go outside of. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on construction in my sketch palette. If you don't see a sketch palette, it might be because there's these two little arrows pointing to the side. I dragged this out, the arrows disappeared. If yours is over here up against the side, you can click on those little arrows and it'll come back out. I'm going to click on construction and I want to go to create and we're going to go to rectangle, but we're going to go to center rectangle and I'm going to click on center rectangle. And notice we're still in construction. And I'm going to click on my origin, and I'm going to drag out. And you're going to see these dashed lines. And I'm going to say 40 tab, 40, and hit Enter. And what you'll notice is now I have this box that has the origin at the center. And we also have ourselves our you know X and Y grid, similar to what you would see in an engineering notebook. And this is going to give us our boundaries for what we can work with when we create our good luck charm. These dotted lines will not be part of the design itself because I will uncheck construction and I can come back up and say, you know, I'm just randomly drawing things here. You know, I can look, I can snap to that to make sure it comes all the way out to the edge. I don't have to dimension, you know, so it automatically says 40 millimeters and that line will be, you know, blue, just like that. Now, when creating our good luck charm, as a reminder, I had it to where the height constraint could not be greater than 25 millimeters. So once you get done sketching, if you go to extrude, we can't go higher than 25. So that is as big as the good luck charm will be. One other thing I want to tell you is that your good luck charm has to have one side, either the front or the top, has to be flat because we will eventually be embossing numbers into it. We will eventually be putting numbers on the bottom so we know whose is whose. Just imagine me 3D printing, you know, 48 of these, and I just have all these random parts. We have to know whose is whose. We will eventually be engraving numbers into the bottom. So the bottom that lays flat onto the 3D printer will be embossing a number into. So please leave, let's say, the bottom of it completely flat, if that makes sense to you. So this is how we will start our good luck charm. However you go from here is your business. I only did, you know, I only did a circle just to show you that you could snap out to those edges. So that was the only reason I tried to show you all a circle. Um, I just wanted to make sure you know this is the way that you can define your boundaries. That's a good way, kind of a visual for you to let you know how much room you have to work with as far as our dimensional constraints go. There's two different types of constraints, size and and location in this case. So like your location dimensions from the left or the right, you know, you can get into using, you know, the mirror tool if yours is going to be symmetrical, all different types of things you can utilize. So I wanted to create a video for you on how to get started. And it's imperative that you follow along, you know, with this video that I just made to, to make sure you're within the dimensional constraints because you don't want to make one that's too big that has to be scaled or one that's too small that winds up the size of a Cheerio and you have all this other room to work with. So this has been a video for how to go about starting your good luck
Charm Project in Introduction to Engineering Design.